it, it, because titles are, titles are important. So this is You Are a Loser, part three. And, and so I've been talking about, about several things that we need to lose, and this is why people have to click on it and listen to it so they understand where I'm coming from. I've taught you that we need to lose worry. I, I've taught you that we need to lose doubt. I, I, I've taught you that we need to lose fear. And so today we're going to talk about losing some habits. And, and this is this is actually Rini's fault. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blame this on Rini. So if you have a problem with this, contact Rini Sherwood at reenysherwood.yahoo.com. Um yeah, at twitchface.com. Turn with me in your Bible. <laughs> Turn with me in your Bible to Romans chapter seven. Verse 15, the reason why I said this is Rini's fault is because I'm going to read out of a different translation today. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. I don't normally do that. I am not typically a different translation guy. If you know me for 30 years, I have 25 years, I have preached out of the New King James Version. Um, I am a New King James guy, died in the wool. Um, but for purposes of teaching today, I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. So... Romans chapter 7, verse 15, but don't get too excited because I'm not going to do it often. Romans chapter, Romans chapter 7, verse 15, we'll read to verse 25. He says this, I don't really understand myself. This is Paul speaking. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I do not do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is, I, I do not want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Is this resonating with anybody today? I love God's law with all of my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, so you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's laws. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Father. I pray that you'll help me preach this message this morning. I pray, God, that you'll hide me behind the cross today. I pray, God, that you give me the words to speak. God, give us ears to hear what you're saying. God, give us a soft, God, give us a heart that's soft. And Lord, I'll be quick to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. So, so each of us struggle with habits that hinder our spiritual growth and rob us of the abundant life that God has for us. But listen to me, but through God's grace and help, we can overcome these obstacles and we can live victorious. So, so the first thing that we need to learn how to do as we're learning how to be a loser is we need to learn, we need to acknowledge the struggle. Paul's words, listen to me, resonate with probably all of us that we find ourselves caught in a cycle of repeating behaviors that we know are harmful or sinful. And I say it like this all the time, and I can say it maybe a couple different ways, is this, is you cannot change what you're not willing to confront. I, I say it all the time. You cannot change what you're not willing to confront. We have to learn how to confront some things, like this morning in our prayer, having to confront the Pharaoh in our lives. You need to let me and my people go. Come on, you, you need to, be, because there's some things that are trying to hold on to us and we need in Jesus' name to, to confront some things. We, 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 we teach our children now not to be confrontational. We need confrontational people. I know some people that will do anything not to be confrontational. 
And I'm sorry, we're going to have to confront some things. Listen, the reason why that the church is in the predicament that it's into today, and I'm not talking this church, I'm talking the whole church, all of us, collectively is the body of Christ. The reason why we are in trouble today is because we have not confronted things We've we've kept our mouth closed for way too long, and we've not confronted it. For instance, Roe v. Wade. The church was silent, and we wonder why now millions of babies are aborted every single year, and the blood is on the hands of the church. Because we kept our mouth shut because we didn't want to confront things. I'm sorry, abortion is sin. It is murder. And if you don't like it, Take it up with God or send your email request to Rene Sherwood at twitface.com because she's going to email you back and say, you're a twitface. Look at the Bible. No, she'd probably be a little kinder than I would. But we have, we have, and, and then now with other areas, other areas that are taking place in our nation, the reason why, listen, so as the church goes, the nation goes. We cannot be, listen, we cannot be surprised what is happening in our nation because it happened first in our pulpits and then in our pews and then trickled down to our society. We, <laughs> some of us might say, my goodness, how could we have ever allowed certain people to be in office? Listen, we allowed, we got what we wanted, we got what we deserved. Because your Bible says that God puts in leaders and he takes out leaders. So the leaders we have were actually given there by God. Can I go a little further? The, 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 the Israelites wanted a king. They wanted a king. They no longer wanted to be ruled by judges. They wanted a king. And they desperately cried out to God and to the people and said, we want a king. And God gave them what they wanted. See, you got to be careful with what you ask for because you just might get what you ask for. And so, 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 the, so the Jews wanted to be ruled by a king. Guess what? They got a king and his name was Saul. And y'all, if you understand his life and his rule and his reign, it was not good. Now, later, we got, we got, we got David. But, but they got what they asked. And David, David came with his own set of troubles, too. But, but, we, but we look at this because, listen, because you, you, have, to, you, have, to, you have to learn something. Is that you're going to have to confront some stuff. When things are wrong, you need to confront that things are wrong. When things is sin, we need to call sin, sin, and stop, stop coddling it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And it doesn't matter who's doing it, who's saying it, who's, well, but God loves us all. Yes, he does. But listen, there are consequences to our sin. And listen, and we are called to be the salt and the light of the world, and we, we're supposed to shine. We're supposed to be salty, and if we're not, oh my God, watch this nation go downhill. Watch this nation go to hell in a handbasket, and you know why it is? It's because pastors have stopped preaching the unadulterated word of God. They no longer preach about sin, and they talk about prosperity and about if you just pay your tithes, you'll be rich. I've paid my tithes for 30 years, and I'm still not rich. I'm still waiting for that miracle check to hit my bank account. Come on, somebody. What? But you know what? My retirement benefits are out of this world. They are eternal. And my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there's going to be someday I'm going to have a dwelling place. I'm going to have a certain translations render it out as a mansion, but it's really a dwelling place because I'm not really going to be concerned about where I'm living. I'm going to be concerned about who I'm with, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. See, we talk about these mansions. Oh, there's going to be a mansion for me in heaven. That's carnal. What you should be thinking about is you're going to be in the presence of the Lord. 
Oh, but see, we're carnal. We, we focus more on heaven, getting to heaven and the mansion than we do being in the presence of our Savior because we're carnal. And, we, and, and because if we're not careful, our pulpits will preach carnality. It's like the old duck that waddled into church and heard a, heard a, heard a, heard a watered-down message, and they waddled right back out the same way that they, oh, God, help us. I, I also say it like this, listen to me, that you cannot conquer what you do not identify. Listen to me. You cannot conquer what you do not identify. I, I better get a better amen than that this morning, or I'm just going to take my time. You cannot conquer what you do not identify. And then I also need to say it probably like this, because it's you cannot change what you're not willing to confront. You cannot conquer what you do not identify. And then this is, this is a tough one, too, is this, is your faith has to be bigger than your excuses. Listen to me now. Your faith has to be bigger than your excuses. Well, I would come to church, but I'm just excuses. Listen, excuses are like bad breath. Everybody has it, but we don't want to be around it. I'm tired of excuses. Do you know how many text messages I get on Sunday morning of excuses why they can't be in church or why they can't come to leadership or why they can't come to Wednesday night or why they can't read their Bible because they're too busy? Listen, if you're too busy to read your Bible, then you're too busy. Because listen, you will make time for what is important to you. You will make time for what is important to you. Well, I can't come to men's breakfast because I got to get my hair cut. You have sick, you have, you have 29 other days in the month to go get your hair cut, boo. No. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're giving me credit for. I, I just don't, I don't have, I, our faith has to be bigger than our excuse. Well, that, that's why, that's why I love my wife so much. She said, she said, she said, Roy, she said, we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to make a way for, for any woman who wants to come to the women's conference to come and money's not going to be an issue. So, we, so what we were doing was we're taking your excuse away because so many of us would say, I can't go because I can't go because I don't have money. Okay, well, we just paid your way. Now what's your excuse? You don't now what's your excuse? Because we just paid your way. So what's your excuse now? Oh, you really don't want to go because if you wanted to go bad enough, you'd go because you can get your nails done. You can get your, you can get your hair did. You can do this. You can do that. You can, you can do all these things. But it, so if you really wanted to go, then money really isn't the issue. Right. Right. Y'all, we, we got to be bigger than our excuses. I can't because, because what? Because you don't want to. Pastor, I just can't make it. It's because you don't want to. Because if you want to bad enough, you'll do it. Listen, some of you wanted that car bad enough. You did whatever you had to do to go get that car. You had to practically finance the rest of your life so you could get that stupid car that is outside rusting right now as we speak. But because, you, because, because your flesh wanted it so bad, you'll make any excuse and you'll make any... You wanted that man in your life so bad, you put on your fake eyelashes... You wrestled yourself in that, in that tight pair of Spanx when you know you look like a busted can of biscuits with it off anyway. You know that. You know you look like a busted can of biscuits, but you, but you, tried, to, you tried to put your bust... Your... Come on. Busted can of biscuits. You did whatever... Listen, you did whatever you had to do to get whatever you wanted. And then now you're frustrated because you don't get the things of God that you... Because you don't prioritize the... Our faith has to be bigger than our excuses. Pastor, I can't serve. No, what you're really saying is you don't want to serve. Because if you want to bad enough, you'll make a way to do it. You, you'll make a way. You, you'll, 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 you'll just make a way. Why don't you just tell me, I don't, I don't want to, Pastor. In fact, I would, res I would respect you more if you just told me no, then lie to me. 
I hate, you know, you know what I hate? There's, there's, a, there's only a couple of things I hate. I hate wet socks. I hate long lines at Walmart. And I hate people who lie to my face. If you don't want to serve, just tell me. I don't want to serve. And don't use that Christian excuse that I, I hate to. I'll pray about it. <laughs> Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. I, I, I'll, let me pray. Let me seek the Lord and find. <laughs> let me ask the question, what do you struggle with? What is that thing in your life that you can't seem to shake? I'm talking about bad habits. So I'm talking about addiction. It comes in many forms, alcohol, drugs, sex, pornography, smoking food, seeking the attention and the praise of other people. I have learned this a long time ago. Listen to me, that if you live off the praises of people, you'll die by their criticism. Listen to me. If you live off their praise, you'll die by their criticism. That's why I don't live off of you. Because some days I'm your best friend and some days I piss you off. And some people I just pissed off by saying piss off. <laughs> Put that on YouTube. <laughs> and I also called you a loser at the beginning of this sermon. But 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 listen, I don't live off I don't live off your applause. I can't. Because if I live off your applause, then I'll die by your criticism. And I have to do what God's called me to do and then leave him for the results. Now, I'd like to be your buddy, but I know some of you I ain't. God bless you. God bless you. You know you shouldn't be doing it. It's bad for you. It's toxic for your soul but you're bound by the addiction. You formed a habit and you can't break it without the help of Jesus. What about, what, so we talk about addiction. What about procrastination, putting off tasks and responsibilities until the last minute and it causes you to stress out? Every year for Christmas, I get so many phone calls, my voicemail gets full the whole month of December. <laughs> it's Christmas and my babies don't have no, no Christmas gifts. And I'm like, I'm looking at my calendar going, you know what? It's December 25th every single year. It comes around every single year. I, Pastor, I don't have no, it just came up on me so fast. Well, you got the same 12 months I did. Because see, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't plan, I, I've heard it said like this, that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. They wait till the last minute and then they're all stressed out and then they put it on the credit card and then they're paying for Christmas for two or three years. Yeah. Meanwhile, your kids are playing with the stupid box. Yeah. And then next year, they don't even know what they don't even know what you bought them. Come on. And you're still paying for it that they already broke it. Yeah. Or a new one came out and they're not satisfied with the old one. They want a new one. You can't have a PS4 when there's a PS5. Negative thinking. Habitually focusing on negative. Leads to pessimism. Low self-esteem. Uh, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. What about unhealthy eating? Consistently consuming things high in sugar, fat, and processed foods. Leads to poor health outcomes such as obesity and chronic disease. I, I, I looked at this. Somebody recently said, well, don't you miss this and don't you miss that? I said, you know what? Being healthy feels so much better. As of yesterday, I've lost 100. And, listen, as of yesterday, I've lost 135 pounds. And, and somebody said, well, don't you miss, don't you miss, don't you miss some of the old foods? Actually, no, because. Because listen, I struggled with severe back pain for 20 years. From, from here to here, I have rods and pins and screws and spacers in my lower back. My L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5 is completely fused with six two and a half inch screws and spacers and rods in my lower back. And for many years, I was on pain medication. I've been on medication for 14 or 15 years. I just suffered with pain. 
And there was many things I could not. The reason why I don't wear, I, most of the time I don't wear tie shoes is because I could no longer bend over and tie my shoes. And then the weight just kept piling on because I could no longer exercise any longer. And then with bad choices, coupled on pile of, of having, having pain issues and issues with, it just compounded itself with my bad choices and my bad, and my back that was hurting. It just compiled it on there. And then I believe that I was probably addicted to food because I was an emotional eater. Come on, somebody. You can say, oh, amen, or oh, help me. Come on. And so I have learned, but but now that my I'm getting healthier, I'm learning that healthier feels so much better than what tastes for just a few fleeting moments. And so I've had to learn some new habits. When I walked in this morning, I had a handful of protein bars and a protein shake, and I walked right past the donuts because the protein bar to me is health and the donut is just empty It's sugar. And listen, I am sweet enough. I don't need any, I don't need any more sweets because I am so sweet. I, in fact, if my wife kisses me today, I am so sweet, I'll give her diabetes. And listen, she's been gone for three days and she's going to get one when we get home. I'm telling somebody, mm, don't call me this afternoon. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be busy smooching my wife. And I can do it, y'all, because I put a ring on it. Come on, somebody. I put a ring on it. Smoking, alcohol, highly addictive, detrimental to your health, physically, mentally, spiritually, right? Excessive screen time. Oh, can I go there, young people? Well, anybody. Anybody. Excessive screen time, spending too much time on your phone or television, which will negatively impact mental and physical health. Learn how to limit yourself. Here on my day off, on my day off a couple of weeks ago, I just wanted to lounge around the house. I didn't go out anywhere. I just stayed in my pajamas and just kind of lounged around the house. And I caught myself just mindlessly just scrolling through. And I burned, I burned so much of the day by just mindlessly scrolling through. Come on, y'all. And I believe that is a blo listen, I do not believe that our cell phones are of the enemy. I don't. Because listen, we're reaching thousands of people. We're reaching thousands of people every single week by the power of media. And we're getting ready in the next month, we're getting ready to reach a whole lot more people through the power of media and radio and podcast and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snap, all kinds of stuff, TikTok, all kinds of things. Listen, we, you, we leverage that for the gospel. We leverage that for the cause of Christ. But listen. But listen, if we mindlessly just spend way too much time on our phones, what if we what if we what if we took just a portion of that time and spend it in the word of God or serving other people or, or reading scripture, doing something that's going to benefit our souls? Come on. What about poor time management? You're late to everything. What about nail biting? Ugh, I, I I used to I used to bite my nails so bad. Ugh. Ugh. I, I, I watched a, I watched the video on YouTube. I should send it to you this week about how they swabbed under underneath a nail, underneath a underneath a nail, and they found out all the bacteria and viruses and scum that is underneath your nails. And then you stick that in your mouth. You're nasty. You know they say statistically. They say statistically. Everybody should get out their phones. Get out your phone. Go ahead, grab your nasty phone. They say they are the most filthiest thing that you possess. Because everybody, when they're doing toilet time, come on, somebody, when they're doing toilet time, what you doing? Remember back in the olden days, Lynn, when, you, when we used to sit on the pot, what we used to do? We used to read the shampoo bottle. Anybody ever do that? You get so bored and you just find something to read? It was either Reader's Digest, the TV Guide, or the, or the shampoo bottle. I can't even pronounce those things. But now we take this in there. We wash our hands, but we don't wash our phones. They say, they say our phones are the nastiest things in our possession. That's disgusting. Overspending. Habitually spending more money than you should. Leading a bad habit of financial stress and instability. What about negative self-talk, which kills self-confidence and hinders your personal growth? 
Listen, we need to learn the power of surrender. Learn how detrimental nail-biting is, biting is to you. And you wonder why you get sick all the time. It's because you're nasty and your nasty fingers are in your mouth. You wonder why you're always stressed out. It's because you don't manage your time right. You wonder why you're poor because you don't handle your finances right. Do you know that you could still, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but you know you could tithe and still be poor? I know a lot of tithers that are broke as a joke. Because they don't manage, because yeah, you give God your first 10%, and yes, he blesses the 90, but if you're still an idiot with the other 90, you're still an, you're just an, you're just a tithing idiot. That's all you are. This is a positive message this morning, isn't it? You're just a blessed idiot. Come on. But you got to learn how to manage your 90. Manage the 10 and give God your 10, yes. But then learn how to discipline yourself and create positive habits. With the 90. Listen, God will bless you, but you got to learn how to. And some of y'all are, are tippers anyway. You need to learn how to stop being tippers and start learning how to be tithers. I'm giving 10% of my income. Don't worry, I've already taken the offering and I'm not taking another one. Not till the next service. I'm going to give God 20 bucks. And you wonder why you're broke. The power of surrender, breaking free from bad habits, begin with surrendering to God's will and inviting his Holy Spirit to work with us. I love this. Jesus taught us to pray, Matthew chapter six. <sighs> okay, if you guys listen fast, I'll talk fast because I've just been teasing now. So Matthew chapter six, verse 10 through 13. Jesus is saying this, your kingdom come. Here it is, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. He says, listen, your will be done. God, what is your will for my life? Talk about renewing the mind. Listen, I say it like this, and this is so true, and we're going to hit this probably on Thursday in our Leadership Academy class here at the church, is listen, you change your habits, change your life. Change your habits, change your life. Change your habits, change your life. If you don't change your habits, your life won't change. Huh. Crickets. Romans, ah, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. This is Rini's fault again for going into the New Living Translation. You'll have to go through the next couple of slides, boys, in the booth. In the New Living Translation, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, in the New Living, says this, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I, I like that. I, I, I like that. Thank you, Rini. So, so it's resisting temptation. Listen, temptation is inevitable, but God promises a way of escape. Watch. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Y'all are listening fast, right? No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way, will make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. In the New Living Translation, it says like this, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. 
So God is saying we can overcome it. We don't have to be a slave to it. Last, last verse. Uh, last verse. Romans chapter 6. God, you're going to have to help me. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 6 in the New King James Version, Rini. <clears throat> We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. Verse 9, we are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. Verse 10, when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live and do not give into sinful desires. So listen, if the writer here is saying, do not give into sinful desires, that means there is a way that we do not have to give in. We don't have to give into it then. Verse 13, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Your whole body. Not parts of it. Your whole body. Sin, listen, verse 14, sin is no longer your master. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedoms of God's grace. Well then, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, that does not mean we can go on sinning. Of course not. Don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? So I become a slave to my excuses. I become a slave to my habits. I become a slave to my addiction. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can, oh, you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Verse 17, thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you, whole, you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led, over, which, led, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. Verse 20, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things that you used to do, the things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead, now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. Now here's where we pick up the great verse. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Do you need to be encouraged? That Read Romans 6. Listen, I, I once was a slave to sin, but not any longer. I was a slave to my bad habits and my addictions and my issues. 
but I don't have to be in Jesus' name. I can be set free from that power. Addiction does not have to hold you. I'm heard, and listen, and I'm not talking behavior modification because behavior modification doesn't work. I'm talking about transformation. I'm talking about Jesus coming in and changing your heart. It's going to take Jesus. It's going to take Jesus. Listen, if you're a drunk, I can, listen, I can slap the bottle out of your hand every time you put it to your lips, but you're still a drunk. I told you that story of that, of that couple that was coming to the, the, the lady that was coming to church with her husband. And she said, she, well, he wasn't coming because he was drunk at home while she was coming to church. She said, Pastor, you got to come and help me. I said, sure. I ran over there. I ran over to the house. I poured all of his booze out while he was passed out on the couch. And I said, that'll fix him. Left. The next day, he, well, when he woke up, he went right back to the store and bought all the booze. It didn't fix him. She came back to church and said, hey, how was, how was that old codger doing? She said, he went back and he's passed out now. He's still drinking. All I was doing was slapping his hand. So I said, I'll fix him. I went back to the house, poured it all out again. How's he doing? He, he went back to the, pastor, this is getting expensive. Yeah. And it wasn't until he changed his heart, until God came into his life and changed his heart, the transformation took place, and then he stopped buying the booze. No. I didn't have to keep pouring it out because there was a transformation that took place in his heart. Listen, he has to want it. You know, one of the hardest things about being a pastor is, is sometimes I want people's freedom more than they want their freedom. I see, I see the toxic living that they're living, and I know that that's going lead to lead to destruction. And, I want, and you want better for them. But listen, they've got to want it for themselves. And if they don't want it for themselves, they'll do it. They might do it for you. The, listen, change might take place a little while. I, I'm doing this for so and so. Somebody said, Pastor, did you lose this weight so that you'd look better for your wife? No. No. I tried that in the past. I had to do it for me. I had to make some changes in my life for me. Is it affecting her? Yes, it is. But I had to, I had to make the changes for me. Because I got sick and tired of the way that I was living and looking. She loved me skinny. She loved me fat. She loved me healthy. She loved me unhealthy. But she's going to love me longer. <laughs> Come on. And, and so, listen, but, I, but I, I, had to, I had to learn how to change some things. And I, and I can't change for you. I can't change for her. I can't change for them. I had to, I had to get real with the Lord and say, Lord, I need to change for me. And, and, and that's the way that we're going to have to, is we're going to have to look at the scripture and say, God, in this context, i got to change. I can't be the same. I've got to, I've got to change some habits so that I can live. I'm going to drop some things now so I can live the life that I want to live. Listen, I had to drop, I had to drop some things in my life so that I could go in two weeks to, the, to ride every roller coaster in California. I'm going to Six Flags in two weeks. Come on, somebody. But guess what? Eight months ago, I couldn't fit on them. And I had to do the walk of shame here while back. I told you about that story. I do the walk of shame because I couldn't fit on one of the roller coasters because I was too fat. I'm sorry, sir. You're going to have to get off the ride. You can't fit. You know how bad that makes you feel? Oh, but now they ain't telling me nothing now. Yeah. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the front. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm gonna get the front row. I'm gonna get the front row, and I'm gonna ride every sucker two or three times. I'm gonna make myself sick. I'm gonna eat a churro. And have you ever puked a Have you ever puked a churro? Come on, somebody. You ain't you ain't ever had fun in an amusement park until you puked a churro out of your nose. You ain't ever had you ain't ever had fun on a roller coaster until you puked a churro out of your nose. Come on, somebody. Just to have, just, just, I might, just, yeah, I'm just going to be able to eat a bite. But that bite's going to come up in Jesus' name on a roller coaster. It's going to come up on, 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 on Superman or something. I don't know. I had to change for me. And listen, you can't change for your wife. You can't change for your pastor. You're going to have to look at yourself and say, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to change. 
God, help us today. There's some habits that we have in our life, God, that are toxic to us. We think that nail biting is gross. But oh God, there's so many other things that are so much more toxic than just nail biting. Lord, whether it's alcohol or pornography, Lord, whatever the habits that we are facing today, God, in the name of Jesus, break it off. Break it off. We are no longer slaves to our habits. We're no longer slaves to our sin. We're no longer slaves to our habits. But God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we are slaves of God, slaves of righteousness, slaves of holiness. Help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever area it is in our life that we need to change, Lord, help us to change it. Give us the power. Give us the strength. Lord, strength in the name of Jesus. To do and to be, God, that what you've called us to be. Help us. Help us, God. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus to be losers. Losers of doubt, losers of worry, losers of fear, losers of bad habits. And God, I'll be quick to give you thanks for the transformation that is taking place in all of our lives, including mine. In Jesus' name. With your heads bowed, maybe you're here, maybe you're watching, maybe you're listening, and you'd say, Pastor, today I don't know. I don't know that I'm ready to make heaven. I'm not, I'm not sure. I need to get my life right with Jesus. I need to ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and save me and forgive me and cleanse me and make me whole. And if you're here, you're listening or you're watching and you say, Pastor, that is me. Would you just pop up your hand right where you are? I just want to pray for you this morning. Is there anybody in the house? Is there anybody here today? This is what I want you to do. Would you just pray with this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins and wash me clean and help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen.